the second season of Hori and Miyamura is here. In response to the requests of fans, the production team was finally willing to release the plot that was omitted from the first season. At the beginning of the season, everyone started taking a break from school and traveling. This was Yuki's first time in Kyoto, so she was very excited the whole time. In contrast, Miyamura looked worried. Because the hotel does not have a separate bathroom, he has to go to the large bathhouse to take a shower. But the tattoos on his body cannot be discovered. In other words, there was no way he could take a bath here. Soon they arrived at the uniformly arranged dormitory. But since they didn't bring the key, they could only wait for Yura to come and open the door. Seeing Mizuchi's classmates coming, the two people quickly asked him if he had seen Yura. After finally entering the room, the first thing Miyamura did was check the bathroom facilities. At this time, it was time to take a bath. Without saying a word, Yura dragged Miyamura to the bathhouse and wanted to take a bath with him. Seeing that he could not refuse, Miyamura could only quickly ask Ishikawa for help. At this time, Ishikawa finally reacted. In desperation, he actually said that Miyamura's menstrual period was coming, and he couldn't take a bath. The friends were all shocked. But in order to escape from the bathhouse, Miyamura could only admit the incident with tears. After the crisis was resolved, Miyamura left here as soon as possible. But as soon as he turned around, he met Hori. When he learned that Miyamura had used the excuse of his menstrual period to escape, Hori couldn't help but laugh. Seeing Miyamura's pitiful appearance, Hideo softened. She told Miyamura that her roommate was not here, and he could go in and take a shower now. Two and a half minutes later Miyamura came out of the bathroom after taking a shower. He asked worriedly, if other boys had similar problems would she let others in like this? Without even thinking about it he said, of course not. But the next second Miyamura asked her again why she let herself in. Hori was so shy that his face turned red. She told Miyamura stammeringly. Anyway she knew that with Miyamura's character he wouldn't do anything bad even if he came in. After hearing this Miyamura thanked him. Immediately he left here. The next day while everyone was playing Hori found Miyamura. She told Miyamura that if he wanted to take a shower she could try to take Yuki out. However Miyamura unexpectedly refused. It turns out that Miyamura discovered a secret. That is people who miss bathing time can take a bath after 11pm. As long as he passes by this time period he doesn't have to worry about being seen with his tattoo. Although the problem was solved for some reason we felt unusually disappointed. The school trip will be over in a blink of an eye. Yuki took many photos as souvenirs. She hopes that if there is a chance in the future everyone can come out to play together. After returning to school Miyamura accidentally got his clothes wet by Ayazaki. Out of guilt she took Miyamura to the health room herself. Moreover she considerately took out a towel and let Miyamura wipe it a little. But seeing that Miyamura would rather catch a cold than take off his sweater. Ayazaki couldn't help but be curious. Miyamura seems to be very concerned about his body. Whether it's when you're on vacation or traveling or when your school holds a marathon. He didn't seem to want anyone to see his naked body. Just when Miyamura was at a loss Ayazaki suddenly stretched out his hand. It turns out that she actually suspected that Miyamura was disguised as a man. This bold guess also left Miyamura speechless. After finally getting rid of Ayazaki's entanglement Miyamura came to the rooftop and told Ishikawa about the incident. So Ishikawa gave Miyamura an idea and asked him to wear a sailor suit. After all he had seen him wear it before and it felt very good. It turns out that just a few days ago Hori gave Miyamura his junior high school sailor uniform. She wanted him to have time to wear it for herself. Looking at Hori's stand sailor uniform Miyamura said he didn't want it. But the next second his body honestly began to change clothes. After getting dressed he stood in front of the mirror and began to admire it. Unexpectedly this outfit fits surprisingly well. At this moment Ishikawa came to Miyamura's home. So he was lucky enough to see the limited edition Miyamura wearing a sailor suit. Miyamura wanted to explain again but Ishikawa didn't seem to care at all. It turns out that Ishikawa likes sailor uniforms very much. He thinks that girls wearing sailor suits can highlight their beautiful silhouette. He also wanted Miyamura to grow his hair long. In this way he can enjoy it anytime and anywhere in the future. However Miyamura felt that western style uniforms looked better than sailor uniforms. The two of them had a heated argument over the girl's dress. At this time President Sengoku happened to pass by. After the two stopped him together they asked him what type he liked. While the three were having a heated discussion hidden behind the rooftop was silently eavesdropping on their quarrel. The next day the teacher called Miyamura and the president. He told them that although swimming was an optional course everyone must participate on the last day. You can only ask for leave unless there are extremely special circumstances. After hearing the news the two became anxious instantly. Because if they were asked to take off their clothes in front of everyone it would be like attending English class naked. Seeing how resistant the two were the teacher no longer forced them. But they need to have a valid reason. In this way the two were assigned to clean the pool on the day of swimming lessons. A chance Hori and Ayazaki passed by after finishing their class. The boy who heard the female classmate's voice quickly ran out of the swimming pool. On this day Hori unexpectedly saw Miyamura talking and laughing with his female deskmate. The chill she felt at this moment made Ishikawa's hair stand on end. After returning home Miyamura lay down on the ground and explained to Hori. It was just because the female deskmate forgot to bring her textbook so the two of them read it together. However after learning the result Ri was still unwilling to give up. She slowly wanted to get closer to Miyamura and let him know how powerful she was. 
However, Miyamura used the position he had practiced for two and a half years so he was not caught for a long time, until finally he was forced to have no way out. At this moment Miyamura looked aggrieved. He said he had done nothing wrong and did not deserve such punishment. Seeing Miyamura's aggrieved look we felt pity and let him go for the time being. When he came to school the next day Hori told his good friend Yuki what happened yesterday. She said it was really scary when she was jealous. After a while Yuki had to leave temporarily because of something else. So Hori took on her task. However because Hideo was wearing too few clothes he started sneezing soon after. This time a classmate in Mizuchi who happened to be passing by saw it. So he lent his coat to Hori. Not long after Mizuchi left Miyamura came here. Seeing another boy's coat covering Hori's legs he asked her. And Miyamura took the coat directly from Hori's legs. And he put his sweater back on. Because Miyamura has been wearing the sweater it is warmer than the jacket. And the two of them sat next to each other and started chatting. Not long after Miyamura noticed Gunai coming over. So he quickly changed his clothes. And he hugged Hori tightly and left the scene in a hurry. After Hori returned the clothes to Mizuchi Miyamura reappeared in front of Hori. The annual school sports meeting is coming. In order to make the competition fair each class divided the students into two teams east and west by drawing lots. Miyamura Ishikawa Kono Sakura and Ayazaki were assigned to the west team. Hori Sengoku Yura and Yuki were assigned to the east team. As soon as the speech ended President Sengoku who was still full of confidence became extremely decadent. Because he had expected that he would be embarrassed during the sports meeting. Turns out that Sengoku-kun's movement bacteria have never been very good. Therefore he never looked forward to the sports meeting. Yamara also didn't he want to participate because he didn't he have good memories of his previous campus life. So the two hit it off and came to the window to pray for rain. Afterwards Sakura Kono checked the grouping situation. She learned that she and Ishikawa were a couple she couldn't help but feel a little happy. It suddenly occurred to her that she didn't fit in with the cheerleaders last year. Ishikawa saw her like that she would definitely be regarded as a fool. The way home Miyamura and Hori talked about the sports meeting projects. Hori said that he would not give in to him on purpose. At the same time she also hopes that Miyamura can go all out. Of course she will cheer for him too. After hearing what Hori said Miyamura who originally hated sports meets started to look forward to it a little bit. Time came on the day of the sports meeting. President Sengoku took the stage as a representative of all students and delivered a speech. However except for his hair the president's whole person looked lifeless. After the speech the sports meeting officially started. First event is the 100 meter hurdles. Hori and Ayazaki were assigned to a group. Thinking that he would definitely not be able to outrun Hori Ayazaki couldn't help but have a headache. Seeing Miyamura cheering for the West team Ayazaki thought of a plan. He directly threatened Ri with Miyamura's ownership rights. This way under Ayazaki's mind attacking technique Hori was pulled away as soon as he started running. Seeing that the opponent's evil plan succeeded Hori was so angry that he kicked over the railing. However this behavior also resulted in a lot of wasted time. Seeing that his opponents have reached the finish line Hidito is ready to give up. This time Miyamura suddenly cheered for Hori loudly. Immediately gained momentum. And Hori finished fourth and Ayazaki was the winner. Just then Miyamura found Hori. Seeing Miyamura coming Ayazaki left the scene very wisely. Miyamura then asked Hori if his leg was okay. After all she was kicking off the railing and making a lot of noise. Hori looked arrogant and said it was okay. She started to blame Miyamura it was all because of him that she lost. It came the borrowed object race one boy was absent due to a cold the teacher approached Miyamura. Hopes he can come on as a substitute. However by chance Miyamura happened to meet Hori in the substitute group. It's even more coincidental is that the person they wanted to borrow turned out to be the Sengoku guild master. This way Hori and Miyamura dragged the president to the finish line at the same time. After the game the president looked at their envelopes. Said, student council president, which made him unable to refute. Top of Miyamura is a thin boy. Came the final event of the competition the horse riding competition as it is necessary to choose boys who are underweight at the top. For Miyamura and Chairman Sengoku were chosen. The president who had not wanted to participate in the first place was even more sad when he learned that it was because of his weight. Seeing the president so depressed Yura stepped forward to cheer him up. However when the president was put on top he suddenly felt a condescending general-like feeling. It was full of energy instantly. For the president took the lead in launching an attack on Miyamura. Miyamura then seized the opportunity to counterattack. After several rounds of competition it didn't have much effect. Looking at this situation Miyamura felt that if this continued it would only consume his physical strength. He thought of a plan. This goes to force Chairman Sengoku to turn around. Taking advantage of this opportunity Miyamura won the game effortlessly. Though he lost the game seeing Miyamura so happy the president also smiled happily. And the East team won the game with a five-point lead. After the game the girls had to take pictures together. Hori changed into a cheerleading uniform. Originally Miyamura was really looking forward to Hiro wearing a cheerleading uniform. He never expected that Hori would just change into another pair of sportswear. This day Miyamura and Hori were reviewing their lessons in the Kotatsu. Father-in-law just wanted to get into the Kotatsu to warm himself up but he was ruthlessly rejected. As the Kotatsu was so comfortable they fell asleep together soon after. 
It was already late at night when Niemara woke up. Afterwards he wanted to go to the bathroom to relax. However, after struggling for a while he discovered that several people's legs were tied tightly inside the kotatsu. It didn't move at all. Then Hori was woken up by Gong. As soon as she came up Miyamura cried out in pain. And after my father-in-law also woke up. As soon as he got up he screamed in pain. Amara saw that his brother-in-law was still sleeping and wanted to wake him up. He wanted him to go back to his room and sleep in case he caught a cold. As Miyamura couldn't bear it anymore he told them to be patient. He wants to break out violently. This time Hori found that he seemed to be able to pull out one leg. And this Miyamura also started to try. After his legs were freed he immediately ran to the toilet. Three people learned from the experience and came up with a solution. As long as they sleep in one direction they can avoid having their legs tangled together. Next day Miyamura came to Hori's house again. As it was already midnight when I woke up last time. Miyamura decided to study until 7 o'clock this time and then go home. Hori didn't have much confidence in this. He expected when Hori woke up again it was already 12 o'clock in the evening. This time Miyamura was still sleeping soundly. Only that there was also a Sengoku Guild master in the Kotatsu. It turned out that just a few hours ago my father-in-law met Sienshur on his way back. When Hori's father Sengoku suddenly remembered his father's advice. He meets the Jew family he cannot be led around and must strike first. Why something bad will happen to him. Words Sienshur quickly made excuses to leave. But before he could finish speaking the other party stopped him directly. The way the fairy stone was forcibly brought back by the father-in-law. The two chatted for a while they felt too sleepy and fell asleep. This time Miyamura was still immersed in his dream of playing online games. Over he successfully formed a team with the president in his dream. Miyamura woke up from his dream and discovered that Sienshur had actually come here. Words he complained to the two of them. Where he could eat or take a shower his father forcibly took him here. Hori asked Miyamura to go wash with him. Miyamura whispered to Hori that his tattoo could not be discovered. Thinking for a while Sengoku remembered about taking a break from school and traveling. Time he deliberately staggered the time when he took a shower. Miyamura explained that he didn't he want to be seen by others because he was skinny. Statement obviously cannot convince Sienshur. Stay Shindo accidentally sent an apology email to his girlfriend to Miyamura. Time Miyamura was still sleeping soundly at Hori's home. Hori checked his mobile phone emails. Seeing the content of the email we was shocked. Quickly woke up Miyamura wanting him to get up and explain. Sleep and half awake Miyamura directly handed over Shindo's name. Made Hori angry and punched him hard. Miyamura finally woke up he realized that Hori was angry. To make her happy Miyamura personally helped her peel tangerines. This time Hori suddenly remembered the plan he had made for himself he could only eat two meals a day. Miyamura tried to lure Hori to eat the orange. That all methods were unmoved Miyamura thought of a secret weapon. And if you don't eat I will kiss you. What Miyamura said Hori blushed instantly, and waited for Miyamura to feed him. Miyamura took advantage of the gap between Hori's words and fed her oranges mouth to mouth. Near the time when he ate sweets before he also fed them like this. Be that this is Miyamura's hobby. The more Hori thought the more outrageous he became. Unsightly picture emerged in his mind. Stay the two went shopping together in the supermarket and happened to meet Sengoku's father. Miyamura coming he quickly held Miyamura's shoulders him that he must hold on and not be affected by the atmosphere of the Jew family. A home Hori told Miyamura. Parents and Sengoku's father graduated from the same high school so they knew each other very well. And the two returned home from the supermarket Sengoku and Sengoku's father had been abducted. The father-in-law and Zayanchi's father started a debate about the family tradition. Dad's talking about love Hori and Miyamura asked Sengoku in a low voice what was going on. Sure said that he wanted to tell him. Instead he didn't find a suitable opportunity so he kept it secret. Immediately afterwards the two parents began to argue about having a girlfriend during high school. The dispute turned into exposing each other's high school past. That the two of them had such a good relationship Miyamura couldn't help but feel a little envious. Morning Jingpu told his sister that he received a phone call yesterday. Own was a boy named Beiyuan looking for her. This my sister blushed instantly. Asked her brother why didn't she answer the phone instead. It made no secret that he heard a boy's voice. He hung up the phone directly. This made my sister very angry picked up the pillow and threw it at him. School the next day Yura was planning to hang out with everyone. Time he suddenly received a message from his sister. He told her brother that some classmates would come to study at home tonight. Asked Jingpu to play outside for a while without being in a hurry to come back. When Jingpu saw this message he immediately noticed something was wrong. Time my sister had already prepared tea and snacks at home. Just waiting for Kidahara san to come to my house as a guest. That her brother was coming to cause trouble the younger sister complained loudly to her brother doesn't he have a girlfriend and come home so early every day? Who doesn't want to have a girlfriend? Just other people making love to each other in school every day, and he is very envious. After Kadahara came to Jingpu's home. At this extremely dangerous boy Jingpu didn't give him a good look. What he served to him was the bitterest. 
This operation did not make Beiyuan retreat. He came more and more frequently. Sometimes he was so fascinated by Jingpa's face that he didn't even notice his sister talking to him. Not long after my sister came home feeling depressed. I told her brother that she could no longer understand Kitahara-san. All because of my brother who is the culprit. Yuan still often chats with him. She always had the feeling that his motives were impure. Came to school the next day Yura told everyone about his sister. Learning that her brother had stolen her love Hori and Yuki couldn't help but sympathize with their sister. Help but complain about Jingpu which made Jingpu very depressed. And explained that he just wanted to protect his sister at first. Expect things to develop to this point. Six girls. That in order to solve this problem Yura has been hiding from Kitahara. As luck would have it Baihara came to their school on the campus visit day the next day. He saw Baidahara Yura quickly hid. Time because they were lost several people from Kitahara came to ask Ishikawa. Ishikawa finished telling them he was ready to leave. And Yura thought he had escaped Hori and Ayazaki came over. But Yura's name loudly and asked him not to block the way. By the power of Hori Jingpu had no choice but to walk out reluctantly. The senior he liked Kitahara chased after him and grabbed Jingura. To dispel Behara's thoughts Yura yelled at him directly telling him to put study first. When as he finished speaking he was taught a lesson by the teacher. As the teacher left here with a few people who were lost. And several people came to the student union room to discuss the matter. When that the junior fellow student was his sister's classmate it suddenly dawned on him. It's out that he is the one who likes Jingpu. Today several people from Gongsun came to Zianchi's house as guests. And when several people were sleeping they found that the room was too small and someone needed to go to the attic to make do for the night. Yura volunteered and expressed that he wanted to sleep in the attic. Kawa woke up Miyamura who was already asleep and wanted him to move his sleeping position. A while of tossing several people fell asleep under the arrangement of the fairy stone. At this time he discovered that there was no place for him at all. He wanted to wake up Miyamura and ask him to squeeze in with him. At the time several people had already fallen asleep and no one paid any attention to him. As several people were already asleep Sienshir walked around the room helplessly. Time Yura came down from the attic and planned to go to the toilet. Sengoku was still asleep Jingura asked what was going on, adding the reason he called Ishikawa. But was still in his sleep unable to extricate himself. After the discussion it was decided to let the lighter Miyamara and Sengoku sleep together in the attic. Several people moved Miyamara to the top together since she suddenly remembered. I had always covered his body before. I wanted to take this opportunity to find out. Just as he was about to take action Jingura who had forgotten his cell phone came to the attic. Seen in front of him Jingpu looked shocked. He pressed his respect for Sengoku's hobby. Plan to slowly leave the scene of the crime. That Jingura had a misunderstanding Sengoku quickly explained to him. It what couldn't help but worry after learning that Sengoku was interested in Miyamara's body. They told Sien sure that he could stand up the table next to him. That he can sleep in the vacated space. The next morning Ishikawa was awakened by the obscene laughter in Yura's dream. Slapped him without saying a word. And Miyamara was still sleeping soundly. And Sengoku suddenly thought that this was a great opportunity to peek into Miyamura's secrets. They told the two of them that he could wake him up. After hearing this Ishikawa looked at him with disgust. They said that he wanted to go too. And several people came to the attic together. He expressed that he wanted to exchange places with Yura. Iwa was afraid that Sengoku would take off Miyamura's clothes. He and Pu that he must not change. Who what extraordinary things Senshi will do to Miyamura. What means is that you treat fairy stones as perverts okay. I couldn't see Miyamura's secret Sengoku still didn't give up. Signed to trick Miyamura again. In the union room that day Sengoku expressed that he wanted to exchange clothes with Miyamura. Miyamura who had no sense of crisis agreed immediately. As Miyamura's secret was about to be revealed Ishikawa directly slapped the pen holder on the table to the ground. The falling to the ground attracted Sengoku's attention. Went around again Miyamura had already changed his clothes. Sengoku's plan failed and he decided to go it alone. Miyamura why he refused to let him take off his clothes. Miyamura was frightened by him. How will Ayazaki and Sengoku go home together? Aki, who was still wearing a skirt in the middle of winter, was shivering from the cold. Then Aki put his hand on Sengoku's face. Then Aki stretched out his hand in front of Sengoku. But Ku looked at Ayazaki's hand and didn't understand what it meant. Aku looked at each other for a while. Ayazaki finally took the initiative and said he wanted to hold hands. And the two of them walked hand in hand on the way home. She arrived in front of Ayazaki's house. Be separated, she told Sienshur that she wanted a hug. Sienshur was a little overwhelmed, he still satisfied her. Hug Ayazaki was still not satisfied. She to continue kissing. But have thought that Sienshur would actually refuse such a good opportunity. There is that he feels it is inappropriate to be on the street now. Aunt Yuki accidentally saw a novel in which the bodies of the male and female protagonists were swapped. Scanned to make her own associations. And she exchanged all the classmates around her. 
Jitting about it like this she couldn't help but laugh. The Ishikawa on the side was also slapped inexplicably because of Yuki's fantasy. They had a big brainstorm and defeated Ishikawa and Lu Mingying. But second she suddenly thought of a question. That to the body swap it is easier for the boys to talk to each other. But when women are swapped what should they do when going to the toilet and taking a shower? I would open the door to a new world. As Yuki came to the library to study. At Lu Mingying who was passing by accidentally scattered the book on the ground. She quickly ran over and helped him pick it up. When he touched his book he felt unexpectedly cold. Then he touched her gently with the back of her hand. Her were indeed much warmer than his own. Apple Yuki found Ishikawa and said that his hands were cold. But Iwa did not understand her intentions. You told Ishikawa that Lu Mingying would not be like him. So up touching Yuki and asked Yuki how this was. How he said that it was not that he was not allowed to touch it. List Yuki's inconsistent demands the straight man Ishikawa's brain almost shut down. He figured out what Yuki wanted to do. Sawa so thought for a while and asked Yuki if he wanted to hold hands. Yuki's furious refused without thinking. When it was over Miyamura saw a scarf under the teaching building. Atom Satin ran over from behind him. At looked at each other for a while Sawada ran over and picked up the scarf. He looked again in front of him and then at the two girls on the teaching floor. Mi who had been there before immediately understood what was going on. At Zetian picked up the scarf and was about to leave. But Mi stopped her. He asked if she was being bullied and if so to come to him. Zit hesitated for a moment then walked over. How Yamara endure it when he learned that his love rival was being bullied? So he his head and wrote an allegro to the two girls. Anum Sawada said that Miyamura couldn't understand him at all. Because so many friends no one agrees with his views. But you know that Miyamara had experienced her moment before. At them he was even a hundred times more miserable than she was. Leora told Sawada that he did not lower his head and beg the people around him to be friends. They did naturally. As it she met today she could just ignore it from now on. When they ask for something from you you will win. The next Tian came to school. See what busy classmates in the class she actually wanted to be friends with everyone. But she know what to do so she felt uncomfortable sitting in the classroom. So they came outside. At the Ayazaki and Yuki happened to pass by. Seemed it was outside they called Zetian to an empty classroom. So asked the two of them if they were weird. I said that it is indeed weird but this weird look is very cute. So he told the two of his troubles. I said that if you have any troubles in the future you can complain to them. I didn't do much to help her. But let her talk about her grievances they can still do this kind of thing. After Sawada was in the classroom and heard members of the art department worrying about where to put the posters. They took of effort to stick it up in an inconspicuous place. See poster was not put up while Zetian thought about putting it up again. At that Sengoku and Ayazaki came over. So that he made a large poster because his classmates club couldn't recruit people. But their place to post it so I posted here. Soku looked at the poster. He's according to regulations posters cannot go beyond the frame. Here it said Zetian thought he couldn't post it here. But the poster is so high up one person can't reach it. So the water ride on his shoulders and slowly tore off the poster. After two took Zetian to the shoe changing cabinet. Then they did the positions of the other posters. Seng posted the art club poster in the most conspicuous place. At this Zetian felt strange so he asked the fairy stone. Aren't graders not allowed to use the poster wall here? Aya said that this little thing is nothing. Our school guild master covers the sky with one hand and can do whatever he wants. In place is used by the whole school. It's just most of them were promoted in the third grade so everyone misunderstood them. After that there was such a misunderstanding Sienshir said. He will school wide notice here later. That's Azishin's secret operation the art department welcomed a new member of the first grade. After that it was Zetian who helped two people in the class came to express their gratitude to Zetian. On the Miyamura just said hello to Lu Mingyin who came home from school. Horium couldn't bear it anymore. Just he called Lu by name when he greeted him. This very unhappy. Seeing Yamara thought she was jealous of men again and quickly argued with Hori. He said he and Lu were not particularly close. But that the point the point is that he called someone else's name. Upon this Miyamara quickly said that he would also call Hori by his name in the future. Just Zaki came with cookies and asked where Yanagi-san had gone. Aya was a little disappointed to learn that he had left. Because these are just for him. While Nayazaki were fighting for cookies Miyamura heard a passing classmate say that the bus would be delayed. He remembered Lu took the bus home. More was very windy outside and several people couldn't help but feel worried. As if Lu Jing was standing alone in the howling cold wind. At this the three people finally rushed over. They told at the bus delay. Only Mr. Lu realized that the two of them had come to inform him specifically. Lu very happily. At this Miyamura bought hot drinks and came to the station. Looking at Coco they handed him Lu was a little flattered. The net order to get everyone to get rid of the bad habit of being late. Liu's teacher decided to strictly control the lateness problem in the next week. 
The full names of the winning students will be posted outside for everyone to enjoy. Hearing Lu who had always had difficulty getting out of bed was in trouble. To this came to the student union to ask for help. After discussed that everyone will call Lu tomorrow to make sure he gets up on time. The neck came. Liu's clock rang. After Kun up Lu turned off the alarm clock and checked the time drowsily. After Imara and Ishikawa called him, but Yanagi hung up immediately because he was angry. In the Sengoku's funny email that woke him up. After at the school Lu expressed his gratitude to several people. But Ish who was hung up without saying a word was still a little hurt. After Lu went to the vending machine to buy a drink. At this Yenshir saw him and wanted to come forward and say hello. As a Ryu was so frightened that she accidentally bought the wrong drink. So so quickly apologized to him. But Lu didn't matter. Seeing the king honorifics to her Sengoku asked him. Why communicate normally with his classmates and Yuki? But he says honorifics to other people. Lu set on his mind without even thinking. He wouldn't honorifics to people he was close to or wanted to be close to. Hearing Tsienshu was greatly shocked. Even tried hard to explain it seemed to be getting darker and darker. Then around the student union room Ishikawa and Yura saw the lifeless Sengoku. So they what was going on. It turned out he was dumped by Lu. After the two of them started to enlighten him. After who basically doesn't know how to use honorifics to everyone but he has a good relationship with everyone. Some to even eat the same thing. So after two people's enlightenment Tsienshu said that he would not worry about it anymore. But what Oa didn't expect was that everyone actually liked Lu more than they thought. After the sure who had not yet come out of the shadow of broken love came to the vending machine again. At this came over to say hello to Tsienshu. Seeing reluctantly talking to him using ordinary communication methods Tsienshu finally understood. It turned he had misunderstood it all along. So he would to use his own convenient way of talking. After Kura and Lu were playing in the corridor. Seeing relationship between the two is so good Tsienshu also wants to use this method to enhance his relationship with Lu. So Ish next to him said that he could imitate Yura. This way at least become as close as they are. When he, he was going to imitate Jingura's behavior Sengoku immediately backed down. Seeing Goku was reluctant to take action Ichikawa planned to show him a demonstration. In order Sengoku wanted to use Ichikawa's body to practice first. Unex what he imitated was completely different. Moro also succeeded in making Ichikawa experience the feeling of being attacked by a pervert. The conversation between the two happened to be heard by Miyamara who was passing by. He thought playing a pervert game. Sengo is the pervert, and Ishikawa plays the persecuted Yanagi. The conversation between the two left Sienshu speechless for a while. At this, Nagi and Yura were attracted by their noise. Ishikawa that Sengoku wanted to look like Yura. But Luz be fine for him to stay as he is now. In the audience, Yasuda was sleeping a group of girls quietly gathered around him. They tie her into cute little braids. When he came to the classroom without knowing the truth, the whole class looked at him in disbelief. Although it knows that he is a perverted teacher who likes female high school students. But they detect that the condition had deteriorated to this point. Then Hor up and wanted to ask what happened to his hair. But after it in for a long time she couldn't say it out. Then me asked him in a subtle way what the theme of today was. However who didn't know the truth certainly didn't understand what he meant. Just then who had overslept and was late hurried into the classroom. After this image of Yasuda she burst out laughing. Then the whole burst into laughter. Seeing this laughing he thought there was something wrong with their heads. After we took out a mirror and asked him to take a look at her beautiful face. After reading the office he began to complain about Mr. Terashima next to him. She actually tell him that a female classmate was braiding her hair. She asked herself to miss a great opportunity to have close contact with her female classmates. At this Suda discovered that the key to the reference room was missing. The female told him that the current key person is the center teacher. And it's he was the one who used the data room yesterday. Later used on the center teacher and asked him to return the key in time. However, the teacher said that he had put it back in place yesterday. Then he'd pocket, and the key was actually still in his pocket. Yasuda was that such a careless person could keep the key. But the moderated thing is still behind. At this time, the key fell out of his pocket. The sent a closer look and found that these were actually the bicycle keys he had lost in the summer. You know it's winter now. After he came to the corridor alone, I saw the teacher dropping things while walking. You keep the key and asked him if his pocket was torn. And it just happened that she had her sewing box with her. Afterward came to an empty classroom. Yuki took needle and thread and started to mend the teacher's clothes. Seeing the people chatting and laughing happily inside the two people passing by outside the classroom couldn't bear it anymore. Is she caught of losing his button in the summer? When Yuki just asked him to sew it back on his own. However he saw her sewing up Mr. Zongfeng's clothes herself. The straight Jikawa became jealous instantly. At this time he had just finished sewing the pocket for teacher Zongfeng. Center guest and asked Yuki why she carried needle and thread with her. Yuki told it was because there was an idiot around him who often broke off his buttons. But recent unknown reason he stopped telling himself. 
During the luck, Miyamura Ishikawa and Yura came to the student union room to taste cakes. Unexpected Suda passed by the door and mistakenly thought that they were reading study materials together. So he can interrupted them. Later he wrote people to the student guidance room for lectures. He originally to criticize a few people for bringing cakes to school. Unexpected topic of discussion was directly led astray by them. They had been seeing Yasuda's home address and his relationship issues. In the end I because I was constantly poked by several people. Yasuda desperate for life reluctantly put them back. Before Litmara told him that he would come back to take away the cake in the evening and hope that he could ice it and preserve it after school in the evening Hori and Sengoku fell asleep in the student council room and were locked inside. Sengoku called the teacher on duty for help before he woke up. But I didn't expect that my phone was out of battery and shut down. Then Hori... After learning the situation she began to blame Sien Shure. She blamed Ku while calling for help. Not long, Hori called the teacher on duty and called over. Yasuda two were lingering and making out in the student union room. So he called them to the office to talk. When he came the next day Miyamura found out about Sengoku and asked him about his situation. He wanted to send she didn't do anything to Hori. The scene and a very strange classmate recently came to Miyamura's class. Not only take photos of Miyamura with his cell phone all the time. Moreover, it sends love towards him from time to time. Even when Miyamura, he would bring his own beautification filter. After ritual at night hiding behind the door, he noticed something unusual. She walked Miyamura and sniffed around him. Sure enough, it's like other men. Usually it's like Shindo or Ichikawa. But the smell different today. This smelled to be what ape stand who coveted Miyamura's beauty. Afterwards, Miyamura smelled his sleeves and felt that there was no difference. Hori said he didn't need to know, he just needed to be able to identify it. However, me said, in this way he is with others he won't be able to smell it. Isn't this fair? When he came to the next day Miyamura was still struggling with what happened yesterday. Seeing that people were chatting Miyamura walked up to them and sniffed them one by one. He wanted difference in their smells. Although Miyamura's behavior is very strange. But as Bahran after thinking about it they didn't think it was strange. When he got home evening Miyamura called Shindo over. Miyamura Shindo to close his eyes with a sullen face. Shindo was at a loss. He didn't know what Miyamura was going to do. Could it be that it to take this opportunity to take revenge on himself? After the two, Miyamura came up to Shindo and smelled it. In the indoor education class that day, Miyamura was playing table tennis with his classmates. Watanabe side has been taking photos of his beloved Miyamura. Looking at his behavior, Ishikawa said that Miyamura already had a girlfriend. And he also had a relationship with boys from other schools. Watanabe didn't care. After all, that is really cute when he has a girlfriend. As for having a relationship with a boy from another school, he prefers it. Later Miyam over and asked them to play table tennis together. In Watanabe as Miyamura comes with his own filters and flash effects. When he got home, Hori felt the strong smell of Watanabe on Miyamura's body. So she be curious with Miyamura. At this time Ara still didn't understand. He clearly had physical contact with Watanabe so why was she discovered? Hori said nothing to do with whether there was physical contact. Although Shin and Shikawa are both excessive. But Watanabe are superior to other men. Because he has long interest in Miyamura, he is the man most likely to snatch Miyamura away. Then Hori's deodorant spray on Miyamura's body. Miyamura turned and slowly approached Hori then hugged her. Then he smartfully. Obviously identify Hori's scent but he couldn't tell the difference between Yuki's and Ayazaki's scents. After Miyamura go of his hand Hori lowered his head in disappointment. Friends who fall in love know that it is inevitable for couples to have some quarrels. On this day I came to school. I saw a thur of gods on his face. Seeing Mia appearance Yuki's eyes widened. Mia murmured calmly that this was a man-made accident. After a while he also came to the classroom. She also had aid on her face. Ishiko was Mia Mara who fought back. But it is not. Th it turned out last night the two of them had an inexplicable quarrel. Hori slapped Mara on the face. Because he was sighted at the time Hori turned his head and hit the wall directly. However this is the same as before. They had long been the reason for the quarrel. Later Miyama that he would never give in before Hori apologized this time. During the lunch way went to the student union room. She complained to Kono and Ayazaki. It's been so time but Miyamura is still not panicking at all. Ayazaki since it was not the girl's fault there was no need to be so angry. But Hori took without even thinking that boys would be more dangerous. Then Hori turned and asked Sengoku if he was listening. She ensures in this case it would be better to just break up. Anyway a court she said Miyamura no longer had any feelings for her. At this time, Sakura also said, Even people who is by your side in the past may not always be by your side in the future. During class needs to cooperate and put forward learning opinions. Because Hori and Amara were still arguing, both of them remained silent. After class, Kawa, who was deeply tortured, hoped that Miyamura would quickly reconcile with Hori. In this state of couple being the middleman is too tiring. 
Miyamar attempted to do it too. But this matter is not my fault. At this moment, Miyamara's cell phone rang. At this time, sitting outside the teaching building. She didn't know he would do this. She knew that all her fault. But that simplest of sorry just can't be said. At this time, came to the corridor. Teacher Yasuke Miyamara and asked him if he had seen Hori. She was absent last class and she was nowhere to be found in the health room or locker room. Later Miyamara to find Hori outside the teaching building. When Miyamara see him Hori burst into tears instantly. Seeing this in Miyamara quickly stepped forward to comfort her. Under Miyamara's warming confession Hori's mood finally calmed down. The next day he came to school wearing a hooded jacket. But everyone says outfit didn't suit him very well. At this time opened the door and expressed that he wanted to borrow a textbook. Seeing that Mi was also wearing a hooded jacket he thought Miyamara was imitating him. Yura felt that Mara was dressed too restrictively. So he stepped and helped him tidy it up a little. In just a moment dressed up Miyamara as a temperamental boy. Just when he was Miyamara how to pose Hori couldn't bear it and kicked him out. Not long after left President Sengoku came over. It turns out kind of outfit is against school rules. He just met Yurode. Jingura told Miyamara and Jingura would dress exactly the same today. Therefore he had to remind Miyamara. During the lunch, Hori saw Miyamara's hat turn over so he stopped him and helped him tidy up. But Hori felt something was wrong so he leaned closer. Sensing Hori, which Miyamara immediately distanced himself from her. Then he changed it and kept Hori away. The next morning, Hori changed back into his previous clothes. Hori pulled a deserted alley. Then she took his and smelled it. After smelling her scent, she smiled with relief. It turned out that already smelled that yesterday's hoodie belonged to someone else. Later, Miyamara to Hori that the clothes belonged to Shindo. He wore it because forgotten to take it with him when he spent the night at his house. But that piece of him was obviously washed, and Hori could easily tell it. This made him very incredible. Valentine's coming soon. In order to prepare for his beloved senior Sawada came to Miyamara's house. She sent him there. However Miyam no intention of appreciating it, and just wanted to ask Sawada to leave quickly. But no matter how tried to persuade him Zetian refused to leave. She had to ask Mara to tell her what color ribbon Hori liked. She even didn't take to directly threaten Miyamara for this. In desperation, Mara had to tell him that Hori liked red and orange. At school, the Neyazaki was curious whether Hori would give Miyamara chocolates on Valentine's Day. Hori said that no such plan. After all, Mi family owns a cake shop, so the cakes he makes are definitely not as delicious as his. Besides, she's at making desserts. Miyamara wouldn't be if he received a bad gift. However, Ayazaki's taste is not important. As long as it's by Hori himself, Miyamara will be very happy. Then several people to meet Miyamara and Sawada in the corridor. Afraid that so would reveal what was bothering him, Miyamara hurriedly stepped forward and dragged Sawada away. Afterwards, Sawada went down from upstairs angrily. At this time, Akka called her. It turns out that Earl is in the third grade. She has a seat she likes. Valentine's in a few days, so I wanted to inquire about his situation through Sawada. Sawada thought. Oh. In the third grade, some guys she knew were Lu Mingyin and Miyamara. At the lower level, also be Ishikawa and Sengoku. However, the girls, she had never heard of any of these names. That's right, this couldn't even know the student council president. I have to say, President Sienshir did was a huge failure. Zetian thought a way he didn't recognize, so he had no choice but to express his helplessness. But the girl told the senior often wore a hooded jacket. Zetian was shocked. She didn't expect one would like the idiot Jingpura. Seeing Sawat sighted the girl thought she also had a crush on Yura. Zetian quickly did. Then she repeated to see if she was serious. After learning Jame, the girl immediately blushed with embarrassment. Later Sawada that Yura didn't have a girlfriend so there was no need to worry. If she wants to, she can help ask about Jinpa's situation. After class, so into the student union room to inquire about the situation. Knowing that he has to receive chocolate, Jinpu was instantly full of desire to survive. He told Sawada was not allergic, and he was not picky about food. As long as it's he likes to eat any flavor. After returning from school, Hori started trying to make chocolate. After a confusion, Hori S. homemade Valentine S. Day chocolates, finally took shape. Then she gave it to him to taste. My brother-in-law said very honestly that it was not delicious. Later, Hori's and mother also tasted it. The two laughed at that this taste depends on personal preference. The next day, Diak Liang came to school. She felt that she had no talent for making desserts. After Kono tasted one, she felt that she didn't need to worry too much. After all this, so it's okay to make it hard. Besides, the most thing is the mind. She doesn't have to be beautiful and delicious as the product. The time has come Valentine's Day. Miyamara prepared day gifts for many people. So much so that more to boys than to girls. This left the girl him and Hori speechless for a while. So Wada hugged and presented him with chocolates made by himself. Even the package type that Hori likes. 
In the student union also made chocolates and gave them to Sakura Kono and Ayazaki. But as soon as I boxed there was a strange smell. The two people quit that they would save it to eat when they got home. Not long after left Kono Sakura chased after him. She handed the git pair to Yuki. When I came to Mi house in the evening Miyamura took out the cake he made. Seeing Hori eat happily he felt relieved. Miyamura said he only planned to wrap the cake. After all it's appropriate to have such a simple Valentine's day. However Hori's it changed instantly. Because she completely out about wrapping chocolate. After tasting it I said he liked the taste very much. And the chocolate was an horrigious plate. This gave him a reassuring feeling. Later Miyamura be a piece. It was indeed muddier than the first time she made it. She became happy. As for the girl Jingpu. Until the third group school she didn't have the courage to give the chocolate away. In this way Jingpu school made both miss the chance of sweet love. On this day Miyamura was beaten severely by Hori again. Seeing Miyamura fighting Kayasu couldn't help but think of the encounter with his wife. At that time Kai was one of the most handsome boys in the school. There are countless girls have secretly expressed their love for him. Because he had some he began to get carried away. As a result this young man learned a lesson from a girl for the first time in his life. This made him stun. At this time Yuriko is behind him interrupted his thoughts. It turned out that the union had too many things to move. He happened to be near and she hoped he could help. So Kusuk helped to the student union. The student council and at this time it's still Sengoku. It's just that the person is Zai and she's father. Looking at the things two people moved Sienshir not only didn't have any thanks. He also complained low movements would delay the progress of the work. Hearing what he said went up to fight against the injustice without even thinking about it. He ordered Sienshir to say thank you to the girl. Sengoku didn't that students would come to educate the student council president. So he asked Kai name in class. At this time Kyu's only a first year student. And Sienshir is a third year student who is about to graduate. Then as the president minded Kyusuk to wear uniforms neatly in school. Then he said thank you though. Afterwards the took outside of the teaching building. Kyusuk apologized reckless behavior just now. He failed to consider his behavior might result in her being ostracized in the student council room. However Yuriko dare. If that was the case just leave. Afterwards Yuriko introduced herself to Kayasuk. Looking at this flock girl Kyusuk couldn't help but feel a little moved. In this way the two gathered to chat from time to time after class. However as Kyusuk school's sweetheart their intimate behavior will naturally arouse the jealousy of other girls. So when school was day a girl who liked Kyusuk stopped Yuriko at the shoe cabinet. She ridiculed Yuri third year student who was not worthy of Kyusuk at all. Seeing Yuriko's not look the girl instantly became even more angry. She kicked the shuk angrily. She then warns Yuri stay away from Kayasuk. However this scene had been seen by Kyusuk who was passing by. So he stepped forward the girl away and then wanted to teach her a lesson. Just when he was about action Yuriko stopped him. She told Kyusuk hush girls. But as soon as she feeking she slapped him directly. It was this slap Kayasuk realized that Yuriko was beyond gentle. She is also up with a fiery personality. It was this slap realized his relationship with Yuriko. On this day after clothes I found that there were no clothes to change. So she wanted to bop from her father to make do. However dad said to not have cute clothes. And for Hori his clothes too baggy. It just so happens time my younger brother came to show off the toys his mother bought. The moment he saw his younger brother Hori directly took off his clothes. This behavior shocked brother. The father next to him that his daughter had bad thoughts about his brother. Hori quickly says just wondering if he could wear his brother's clothes. The father looked at it said that his brother's clothes were too small. And Hori seems in some weight recently. Hearing this Hori lost his temper. She turned around at brother's room to find one to try. Dad is also a excitement and doesn't think it's a big deal. He quickly called his son-in-law to come over and admire it. Soon after Hori out of the room wearing his brother's clothes. However the moment Hiyamara Hori immediately blushed and hid. After learning that a father who called Miyamara the father and daughter started their daily bickering again. At this time Jia had already prepared dinner. Looking at this life atmosphere Miyamara couldn't help but feel the fun of rising up again. The next day Hori and Mara were doing homework in their room. At this time the young suddenly walked in and asked the two of them to play outer space games with him. The rules of the game are. You can only survive on the blanket if you go beyond the boundary you will die from lack of oxygen. As soon as his young walked in Hori slapped him and pushed him out. Later the younger brother in a pillow. He said he success on the lifeboat. This time he will turn into motivation and take revenge on his sister. Miyamura couldn't cheer for his brother. But this made Hori angry. She thinks the male penis is a traitor. Just when Hori was a deal with the traitors his younger brother had quietly sneaked up behind them. Then he raised the knife struck it down with a hammer. A second ago he was enjoying the joy of revenge. But the next second he forced into a corner unable to fight back. After dinner my brother the kitchen. 
Looking at the dishes, he stood on the bench and started washing them in order to help his family share the housework. Soon after, Hori door opened and walked in. Seeing this scene, Hori and to criticize the state without saying a word. Seeing his sister lose temper for no reason, the younger brother suddenly felt aggrieved. He burst into tears. At this time, Horikli explained that he said this to him because he was afraid that he would get hurt. At this time, Miyama heard Hori's voice came to check. After learning what happened, Mara felt that what Hori did this time was indeed inappropriate. My brother just wants. However, he didn't expect just after his brother was coaxed, Hori started crying again. At this moment, even Mara couldn't help but want to cry. He hurriedly coaxed the things. After Hori come, Yamara apologized to Hori. Maybe he really went this time. Hori said that he must his side. Miyamara said that he her side. But if she really makes it, I will criticize her severely. The next day, because this composition was praised by the teacher, he took it home to show off to everyone. The topic of the composition my family. But what everyone didn't was that the family member he wrote about was, my brother. At this moment, the male protagonist did death stare. On this day, Miyamara Hori's house and asked her to go to school with him. But yesterday, I was talk show until early in the morning. Therefore, she is still Aussie state. After waking her up, Mi asked Hori to quickly go to the room to change clothes and prepare to leave. Miyamura and his ba watched the morning news at the dining table. However, by the time that was over, my brother-in-law had finished his meal. Hori didn't come out of either. Seeing that time was up, Miyamura hurried to Hori's room to check. Looking at Hori's ma Miyamura picked up a comb and combed it for her. Soon after, Miyamura at the door and waited for Yui to come out. At this time, Hori found that he had become a ball head. She quickly ran out to Miyamura what was going on. It turned out that when Mi was combing her hair just now, he gave her a bun on a whim. However, Hori said that style did not match the uniform. Hearing this, Miyamura was a little disappointed. After all this was managed to do for her. Seeing Miyamura's ex, Hori decided to go to school with this hairstyle. After arriving at Skri's meatball head was indeed praised by everyone. After seeing it, Yuki wanted to tie one of the same style. It's a pity that her hair is short and can't be tied up at all. Coming to the corridor, he saw Hori's hairstyle and thought it was very cute. After receiving praise when Hori happily came to Miyamura to show off. Hori hopes that Miyamura continue to tie her hair in the future. Miyamura thought for him and said that he would wear a braid next time. However, because his hair tied, Hori felt a little chilly on his neck. So Miyamura subcon touched her hair. But the next second he would be hit by Hori. Because she was afraid that Hori would mess up her hair. During recess rising the student union. She expressed that she was of Miyamura's hair. His hair will not have hair nor will it get stuck when combed. This is really infuriating. Upon hearing this, he immediately gave her a bad idea. After the hair is tied, will remain raised for a period of time. It would be fine if she's method. The next day, several came to the student union room. Because not long after, one will graduate. Therefore, things need to be neatly in the student union room. At this time, Jing Poof, the box on the top of the cabinet, was crumbling. So he took it down. Ishikawa also helped pack and move the box easily. Kono Sakura quick asked her gratitude to them. After all, she really had that much strength. But the Immortal Stone neck was not very happy. Because the shaky box now was the one that Immortal Stone had finally moved up. At this time, Hori and Aki, who had gone out to take out the trash, returned to the student union room. Lu Mingying came here with them. It turned out that Ayaz had just thrown the phone into the garbage dump when he was taking out the trash. As a result, Lu Mingying the phone. Seeing everyone cleaning student union, he said that he could also help. Then he casually picked box that was blocking the road and moved it to the corner. This makes the already Immortal Stone even more sad. At this time, Miyamura moved a box to the student union room. Seeing an adult edgy magazine inside, Sakura Kono quickly asked what was inside. Miyamura said that you confiscated things from students before. Because Yasuda couldn't, he asked her to move it and return it to the students. Then Yuki was also a Yasuda to carry a box of things. Seeing her struggling, Lu Mingin quickly stepped forward to take it. After everyone finished, Sagura picked up a postcard on the table. He turned around and looked people as if everyone was at the beach. Seeing Jinpa's yearning, one was very moved. They agreed that after graduation and getting their driver's licenses, they would go to the beach together. Soon they really ushered a graduation ceremony. After school, they went together as before. Perhaps they will never set in that land filled with youth again. But the time of youth will deep in their memories forever. The next day, while Mia still immersed in sleep, he received an urgent call from Hori. Hori is very anxious to Miyamara to come to his home. However, as soon as Mia hung up the phone, he fell asleep again. When he finally arrived at his house, four long hours had passed. To make up for being late and brought a bunch of desserts. He tried to win Hori's ass. However, as soon as he stood the door, he found that Hori had not yet appeared. Just when he was confused, voice came from behind the door. He said in a panic that he brought a cake and hoped that everyone could taste it together. After hearing Hori's ass, he finally let go of his worries. But soon he was shocked right before him. 
unexpectedly hoary long hair on a whim, seeing the huge change it's in front of him Mia a while before he remembered to praise her for her beauty. But it was this second of hesitation that made Hori think that Miyamura disliked him. She doesn't want this either, but there was a miscommunication in her and the stylist so her hair became the same length as the boy's. In order to comfort Hori proposed that he also wanted to get a haircut. So when Kaisa came home he saw the two of them who had cut their hair short together. He thought it was Hori who was tricked so he pulled Miyamura over and asked him what happened. Miyamura had no choice of the truth. At this moment even Q speechless. He had to ask Miyamura ethically if he was not used to such ultra-short hair. Miyamura touched his bare and felt something strange. But ever since I got together, there seemed to be more and more strange things happening. He's already used to it, amid everyone's noise and about to say goodbye to everyone. I hope Hori and Miyamura will continue to be so sweet.